Okay. I think we got it. I think we're live streaming. I got a notification. I'm assuming it's working. Well, awesome. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here. My name is Maria Scotti. I'm the trainer for the Thrive Business Accelerator at RMMFI. Really, really, really excited for tonight. This is the culmination of a lot of work, um, a lot of all the capstone projects from our entrepreneurs. Um, really excited to hear what they've been working on. So it'll be a really fun night. Um, let me start sharing my screen. One second. Okay. And can I just get a thumbs up if everyone can see this? Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So like I said, my name's Maria. Uh, pronouns are she, her. I'm the trainer for the Thrive Business Accelerator. Um, just want to go over a couple kind of housekeeping things with Zoom for tonight. So we'll be, um, you know, I would love it if you could keep your cameras on, if you feel comfortable with that. It's just really nice to see people's faces. Of course, you know, we'll be online for quite a while tonight. So if you need to get up, use a bathroom break, get some water, totally fine. Um, feel free to just turn your cameras off too. Um, if possible, you know, it's always great to just mute yourself when you're not speaking. Um, we have some really great presentations to get through and just wanna make sure that there's no background noise that is distracting to anybody. Um, and wanna make sure too that, does everyone know how to use the raise hand function in Zoom? Could we do a quick test? Just wanna make sure, okay, I see some. Yep, it's in that little, um, I think it's like the little like emoji control. I see a lot of raised hands, so that's great. We'll be using that later in the evening. So good to see that all of that's working. Um, and we'll be using the chat quite a bit tonight too. So feel free to just, you know, use the chat to connect with folks, private message, or to just share out with the group as well. Um, it's a really great option. So to get started, um, could everyone please, you can, you can also like lower your hands too. <laughs> it seems like everyone knows how to use the function, but to get started, if everyone wouldn't mind just sharing their names, uh, their business or organization that they're part of, and then their pronouns in the chat, that'd be really great. Just really good to see who's in the room. And if you're a mentor, maybe you could include that too. If you're a presenter, you know, include, include how you've been involved with the TBA program. So go ahead, take a moment to just put that in the chat. Awesome. Hello, Steve, welcome. Doug, we have a lot of our mentors. Great, Scott, Laura, awesome to see you here too. Hi, Jess, nice to see you. John, thanks for joining. Great to have you here. Awesome. This is great. Thanks so much for, for sharing who you are. This is awesome. It's really great to just see uh, this really wonderful community that's coming together tonight. So I really appreciate that. So let's continue. Um, here's a quick overview of our, our time together tonight. So we'll have about two and a half hours together. We may not go the whole time, but we do have um, a somewhat large uh, cohort of entrepreneurs. We have 11, so we just wanna have enough time for our presentations, but we'll be meeting from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Like I said, it's a little bit long, so feel free if you need to get up to use the bathroom, do whatever you need to do, totally fine. Um, what we'll cover tonight is just kind of a high level overview of the Thrive Business Accelerator program, what it is, how does it fit within our MMFI's other programs, and some of the key things that entrepreneurs get out of the program. We'll thank our incredible mentors with a raffle. Um, surprise, surprise, that'll be really fun. And then, you know, I think the bulk of our time together and really what we're all the most excited for is our capstone project presentations from our entrepreneurs. Um, this is really the culmination of the whole program. So it'll be really exciting to see what folks have been working on. The way it will work is that each entrepreneur will have about six minutes or so to present on their project. Um, and then they'll have two minutes of Q&A from a panel. And panelists, I think we're all here, which is great. Thanks for, for volunteering and showing up. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about support and other offerings that RMMFI has for after the TBA program. And when I say TBA, that's Thrive Business Accelerator in case folks are not aware, that's our acronym. And then we'll just kind of wrap up with some closing remarks and announcements. Um, and so again, I just wanna say, you know, this amazing group of entrepreneurs is about to complete a huge accomplishment 
Um, this was an intensive 10 week program that these entrepreneurs embarked on to strengthen their business in community with other brilliant entrepreneurs and business professionals. Um, they've, they've just put in so much time and energy and commitment to this program and um, have really fostered a strong community with other entrepreneurs. They've supported each other. It's been really great to watch. And we're just really excited to celebrate them tonight. So that's what we're all here for. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Um, cool. So this is, we'll just do, um, make sure I didn't skip too far ahead. Okay. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit about the Thrive Business Accelerator program and kind of where it fits within the whole ecosystem of ARM MFI programs. Um, so as a reminder for anyone who isn't super familiar with ARM MFI, here's the structure of our programming. You can see this nice little, almost like a flow chart here. Um, so all of our programs have components of mentorship, access to capital, education, and community. And we continuously try to listen, learn, and develop new supports for entrepreneur, entrepreneur community. We know this is constantly evolving and changing and you know, needs are always different. Um, so the idea phase that you can see here on the, the left-hand side of the screen um, provides programming like our idea lab. And this is really where entrepreneurs hone in on and develop a business idea and learn about kind of entrepreneurship in general. Um, then folks move into our launch phase. And this is where we offer our business launch bootcamp program to help entrepreneurs develop their business idea even further. And this is through workshops, classes, mentorship, and a lot more. And then after graduating bootcamp, our MMFI grads get access to a myriad of Thrive supports with amazing opportunities to grow their knowledge and skills, access capital and mentorship, build community, network, and so much more. And then as part of this Thrive stage, entrepreneurs um, can take part in the Thrive Business Accelerator program, the TBA. Um, and this program was developed to be an additional option for our MMFI bootcamp grads who wanted to level up their skills and knowledge, access capital and mentorship, and learn within a cohort of experienced entrepreneurs. And so this group is actually our third cohort, so it's still relatively new, um, which is really exciting. But um, yeah, really, really great. We're already gearing up for the, the fourth cohort coming up. Um, so now we'll dive into a few more of the specifics of the program. So you can really get a sense of, you know, what the entrepreneurs have been going through, what they've been learning and what they've been doing. So here's just a quick overview of, of the program in general. What is the Thrive Business Accelerator? So in short, it's a 10 week cohort program that's designed to help arm MFI entrepreneurs improve, grow and strengthen their businesses. Um, I would say it's probably intensive. <laughs> I think is a good, a good way to uh, categorize it. I think maybe the entrepreneurs would agree with that as well. Um, the program includes a lot of benefits. So entrepreneurs have access to educational workshops with topic experts. They have pre-approval for a 0% interest loan up to $1,000. Um, they have access to experiential labs, providing structured time to work on their business. Um, they get weekly one-on-one -on -one mentor meetings and are paired with a mentor who kind of meets their goals, their needs, maybe their sector. And they're part of a community of experienced arm and thai entrepreneurs. We know that entrepreneurship can sometimes be uh, a solo expedition and can be a little bit lonely. So, you know, I think this program provides just a really great space for folks to connect, to problem solve, brainstorm, and just really support each other. Um, and finally, uh, the program culminates in a self-guided capstone project and presentation. So since mid-March, the 11 entrepreneurs that we have here tonight have attended core learning sessions and labs with me and expert presenters each week. Um, plus they've been meeting with their mentors on a weekly basis, working on their capstone projects and goals and continuing to run a successful business. So it really is such a huge accomplishment for all of them. That's why I think I categorized it as intensive. <laughs> so this is an overview of the weekly education topics that our entrepreneurs covered in the program. I won't read through all of these in detail, but we covered marketing for the first two weeks, operations, financials, management, covering everything from storytelling, digital marketing, business automation tools, CRMs, hiring, outsourcing, to strategic visioning, metrics, and goal planning. So a lot of um, topics covered. 
Um, and some examples too of what we did each week included setting weekly SMART goals, um, entrepreneurs perfected their business description, their vision, strategic goals, that was really important. We had an interactive session where we actually um, put together financial projections and forecasting. Um, and yeah, all of this was really thanks to our expert presenters who volunteered their time and expertise. Couldn't, couldn't have been possible without them. Um, and I think some of our presenters are actually here tonight. So if you wouldn't mind, if you are a presenter, would you mind raising your hand so we can just kind of see who you are in the Zoom room? Okay, hi, Kathy, great to see you. Awesome, thank you. Great. Jesse, of course, thank you for being here. Also, Jesse's an RMMFI grad. Yeah, and if folks wouldn't mind just unmuting quickly and let's just give a quick round of applause for our amazing presenters. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Could not have done it without them. And of course, um, another key, key component of the TBA program and everything that we've been able to accomplish is our mentors. Um, these folks are our business leaders, entrepreneurs, they're business owners, and they've also volunteered their time and expertise to work with our entrepreneurs. Um, on this slide here, you can just see kind of quickly the entrepreneur and then the mentor that worked with them. And so these relationships, you know, lasted 10 weeks. Folks met every single week, sometimes more. Um, so really, really wonderful. A huge, huge thank you and round of applause for our mentors as well. Um, mentors, if you wouldn't mind just raising your, your Zoom hand too, that would be great. Would love to see where you are. Hi, Mickey, Karen, John, Jeff, Doug. Awesome. Steve, so good to see you all. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm going to transition to Emma to just talk about, um, to do our mentor raffle. Thanks, Maria. Um, I just want to second what Maria was just saying. Um, our mentors are such a huge part of this program, and I know you all have been um, really incredible resources for each of the entrepreneurs that you've been supporting along the way. Um, I know that many of you have been, you know, in touch with me, in touch with Maria, asking for, you know, additional resources to connect entrepreneurs with in the future and um, really just supporting folks holistically. Um, and so I know that I really appreciate that. I know our entrepreneur community really appreciates that. Um, so seriously, thank you so much for giving the time um, over these past 12 weeks to, to support these folks along their journey. Um, same goes to our workshop providers. Y'all are amazing, um, and I'm sure we'll we'll hear some things that folks learned uh, in the workshops during presentations tonight. Um, but we're just super grateful um, to all of our workshop presenters. Uh, thank you, Jesse and Kathy, for being here um, and also being repeat volunteers. I know you have both been in it um, for a while and, and supporting this program for a while. Um, I also want to give a special shout out to Scott Zimbalan, who has been mentoring since TPA number one. Um, and so you've really seen kind of how the, the program has evolved over time. Um, and, and we're super grateful to have you um, and all of our mentors. So thank you so much. Um, we're gonna do a quick raffle. Uh, I think you can go to the next slide, Maria, awesome. Um, so we're gonna do a quick raffle. Um, we have a small gift from um, an RMMFI grad owned company called Alternative Essence. Um, that's owned by Chanel Marsh Bank. Um, so we have a small gift for our one lucky winner. So can I get? A drum roll, please. Who's gonna do it? It's Emily. <laughs> I can't hear it at all, but we'll believe that you tried. <laughs> tried. Awesome. Yeah. And our winner of the raffle is Karen Gados. So congratulations, <laughs> Woohoo! Um, I am. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah, you're a winner. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, of course. I will be in touch with you um, to get that gift to you. Um, and thank you so much. And then I think we got one last slide here. Cool. Um, so we don't have, or we, we haven't shared yet the exact dates for the TBA4, um, but those will be coming soon. Like Maria said, we're already getting that ready to go. Um, it's going to be running from kind of mid-August through October of 2022. Um, and so, you know, would love to have any of our mentors and workshop providers back if you all are interested. Um, we've just really heard just such wonderful things about all the folks that you've been working with and, um, and, and the impact that you've had. So uh, I will be in touch with kind of more specifics and dates, but 
definitely let me know in the meantime if you are interested in learning more and maybe uh, joining us again for the next cohort. And that's all for me. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much. Okay. Well, let's transition to our capstone projects. I think this is the, the highlight of the evening. Um, we're going to learn all about our entrepreneurs, their businesses, and what they've been working on throughout the TBA program. Before we get into presentations, let's just talk a little bit more about what the capstone projects actually were. Um, so basically, each entrepreneur chose a goal that they wanted to work on throughout the 10 weeks of the TBA program. And these were goals. This was something that was really important and impactful to their business. And this, this goal eventually became their capstone project. So all of these projects are very different, as you'll see, as different as each of our businesses and entrepreneurs here tonight. But all of these were really different and unique, um, but I think all of them are, are really just impactful to each entrepreneur's business. Um, each project, too, will help the entrepreneurs strengthen their business for the long term and reach their long term business goals. And so, you know, we understand that uh, this program was only 10 weeks. And so some of the capstone projects, you know, reflect that shorter time period. But I think some of them, too, are just step one in longer term kind of strategic visions for folks. So um, yeah, really excited to see these. And so we'll talk a little bit about just what the presentations will look like. And so as I mentioned earlier, entrepreneurs will present on their project for six minutes. Um, they'll just walk us through what they did, why it was important to them, you know, what they got out of the, the TBA program. And then each entrepreneur will get about two to three questions from our panel. Um, so I've identified a couple folks who will just listen in and ask some really engaging questions. And so these questions can be about the project itself, it could be about the business, it could be about takeaways, maybe next steps in, in the journey and the, the culmination of the goal um, for the entrepreneur or really anything else that feels important or relevant to dig into. Um, and so I'll be keeping track of time for everybody. I have a little kind of stopwatch here, so I'll make sure that we're staying roughly on time um, I may just politely and lovingly jump in if we look like we're going uh, quite over. Uh, we just want to make sure that everyone has a chance to get through their presentation and also has a chance to get questions as well. And so I'll try to give maybe like a 30 second warning if, if we're getting close to, to going over quite a bit. Awesome. And so here's our order of our presentations for tonight. So we'll start with Kimberly and then Rebecca, Jantir, Sam, Rochelle, Mark, Rhea, Annabelle, Adrian, Jessica, and then Pamela is going to take us home. And this is our capstone project panel. And so a huge thank you to these folks too who, who are volunteering their time tonight and listening in and just engaging with us. And so we have Karin Gados, a TBA mentor. We have Mickey O'Neill, also a TBA mentor and from a partner organization, SEDS Finance. We have Scott, TBA mentor as well. We are really lucky to have Jesse Berg here with us. Uh, Jesse was one of our TBA expert presenters. She's a business owner, a serial entrepreneur, and an RMMFI graduate. We have Brandy Stewart. Um, Brandy is RMFI's partnership coordinator. She's a business owner, and she's a graduate of the last TBA cohort. So really excited to have this group here. Okay. So before we, we dive in, just want to make sure, see if there's any questions, anything coming up for anybody? No? Okay. Great. Well, with that, and I should say too, um, for entrepreneurs, uh, since I'm controlling the slide deck, just let me know whenever you need me to go to the next slide and I'll just click for you. Okay. So let's get started. I think Kimberly is going to kick us off. Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. And thank you all for being here. It's a pleasure. And um, today I'll be sharing a little bit about my Thrive Business Accelerator journey. And my name is Kimberly Ming. That is my artist name, although my legal name, as you may have seen in the previous slide, is Kimberly Ford. Next. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about me so you get an understanding of my business path, my entrepreneurial journey. 
the legal structure of my business, which is really why I signed up for TBA and um, a SWOT analysis that I've done, a big leap that I'm taking in a timeline and next steps I see for my business. Next. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm a first generation college student. So shout out to TRIO and Upward Bound. Um, that's a program that helps first generation college students or and or low income students really reach college and and make that a possibility. So I owe so much to that program. I'm also a first and first and second generation ish citizen. Um, and the reason for that is my mom immigrated from China, but my dad is uh, Puerto Rican and he has been in Colorado for all his life. And then, um, I, so that makes me Chinese and Puerto Rican. And I actually got a bachelor of arts in ethnic studies and women's studies. And that really drove, um, where I am today as well. And storytelling and spoken word are an absolute passion of mine and diversity, equity, inclusion work and healing work are also a passion of mine. And so anytime I hear diversity, equity, inclusion work, I actually feel like it's actually deeply tied to healing and um, healing the wounds of our past systemic discrimination that has happened within the United States. Next. So um, something that I've had the opportunity to do is public speaking in several spaces. I did not grow up feeling very brave to be a public speaker. I was quite shy and actually didn't know where my voice really fit. But I've had opportunities to be behind the scenes in certain documentaries like this one you see here, Gangsta Gardens. Um, and then also just being a public speaker and facilitator in many spaces. Uh, a project with Nine News that I did was nominated for an Emmy and I was able to kind of elevate some of the speaking opportunities that I've had through that. And next slide. And with that, it leads me to my entrepreneurial journey. Um, in 2014, I graduated from class 10 of the Rocky Mountain Microfinance Institute's Business Launch Bootcamp, and I actually launched Infinity Productions. Infinity Productions was really focused around storytelling for nonprofits, and I kind of housed my passion for storytelling under that business. Um, also, my stage name used to be Infinity, and so that's why I used it. Um, but then in 2017, I actually ended up kind of as windy roads of entrepreneurship sometimes go, ended up getting a nine to five job at RTD because, you know, I was not really set up um, to fully understand the cycles of um, entrepreneurship. And I was I wanted that steady paycheck, to be honest. I was I was in a I say that I launched a business at the same time I had my baby. So I had like twins. And um, during my time at RTD, I launched a podcast called the Mixed Gen Podcast and Sister Circle Wellness. And then in 2021, I decided to move back into where I feel like my heart lives, which is the entrepreneur space. I heard the term serial entrepreneur earlier and or entrepreneur. And I feel like I am definitely that I connect to being able to be creative. I think sometimes people think being an entrepreneur is just because we don't want a boss, but I really think it's because I have a creative spirit and I want to see what I have in my head come to life. Right. And I'm always willing to collaborate. And I, I do that through connects, uh, equitable engagement firm that I created in the entrepreneur space. And now through the TBA program, I really have been thinking about how I want to focus my work as Kimberly Ming, my artist name. Um, Ming is my son's middle name. And um, I use that in the entrepreneur space and in my creative work. Next. So I know that can seem like a lot. We're um, looking at what it kind of looks like a sponsorship page to an event, but these are the different brands that I've created over time. And um, I'll share a little bit more about how I have kind of housed these. Next. So like I said, a big reason I came into this program was because I had created all these um, trade names for my business. And I 
actually didn't know if I was doing it in a way that was legal. (laughs) Um, Luckily, I found out through my amazing mentor, Naomi, that I am doing it legally. And to have a trade name under one LLC, which is Infinity Productions, is a way that I can have that legal protection while also operating with one LLC and not having to start so many. And so um, Connects, Mixed Gen, and Kimberly Ming are all actually trade names of the larger business, Infinity Productions. And then Sister Circle Wellness, which is a business that focuses on retreats for women of color, um, that will operate as a separate LLC because I have a business partner. Next. So I did a SWOT analysis, and um, that really helped me understand some straight strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And a strength that I felt I have is I'm multifaceted. I have a lot of interests and desires, and and I feel like I'm able to adapt quickly to new environments. But a weakness can be, with all those different logos, is focus. And I am still one person. There are still 24 hours in a day. I still have to sleep. Um, And so because of that, you know, that can actually be a weakness. But an opportunity for me has been to really narrow down my focus and really think like, what do I love to do? What am I paid to do certain things, paid well to do certain things with? Um, And that has been facilitation, that has been public speaking, that has been um, a space that I wanna expand in. So why not me, you know, and why not now? And a threat could be that I lose some business. There are some people that may not be fully attracted to just my name and my consultant work under my name fully, but that's okay. Next. And so I love this quote, are you willing to take the big leap to your ultimate level of success in love, money, and creative contribution? Um, I love this quote because I feel like I have taken a big leap, many big leaps actually in my life. And there's some times that I've landed harder than others, but overall I've always ended up okay. And so I think it's always important as entrepreneurs and and visionaries that we do what we love and we do what lights us up. And this process with TBA has helped me really think about that, which leads me to where I'm going next. So I am focusing, as I've mentioned, on Kimberly Ming as a larger brand name. I also have thought about multicultural mommy, but, you know, um, to be continued um, because I focus a lot on mixed identity of being Asian and Latina. Um, And the Mixed Gen podcast will kind of hold that space for those conversations and also be able to house, um, again, consultant work under that. So you see a screenshot of the many websites that I have right now. And I really need to streamline it. And so I I plan on housing some things just, again, under Kimberly Ming. And Sister Circle Wellness, again, will have its own website because that's the standalone LLC with my my partner in that work. Next. So something exciting is I am working to fund a audio book and I haven't launched it yet. So you all have the opportunity to be notified on the launch of this Kickstarter. Um, And this is really, again, my focus of being multi-ethnic, multi-faceted, and and how I can tell a story. Think about like Trevor Noah, Born a Crime, mixed with, if any of you are familiar with um, Elizabeth Acevedo, she has a book called The Poet X. And it really um, is my vision to create some sort of a, a collection of poetry that is in an audiobook um, format. And that will really help me with being a speaker and continuing to be a thought leader around the multicultural realm. Next. So this is a timeline. I'm not going to read everything on the timeline, but really, um, I couldn't fit everything I need to do within this timeline for a successful, not only audio book, but continued successful, successful future. But um, really, as I graduate this May from TBA, I plan on using things like transferring my spreadsheet of contacts into a customer relations management system, um, redoing my website, um, also moving, I'm moving to Florida. <laughs> um, out, of, And so I need to register in Vinity Productions as a foreign entity in Florida, and then continue with um, some of these developments for the audiobook. So um, by hopefully December, I could be doing holiday promotions for the audiobook. 
Next slide. Um, again, if you want to sell or celebrate <laughs> and also support the creation of the audiobook, there should be a link coming to you. Oh, there is in the chat. So please click on that and you will be notified on the launch of the Kickstarter. That's been um, a great joy to even think about the fruition of this coming together. And lastly, next. Some next steps for these different sections of my business. Um, I need to create an operating agreement, which is in works um, for Sister Circle Wellness, create a plan for a retreat we're doing in 2023, um, continue to plan the next season of the Mixed Gen podcast. And then I have a contract um, with the city and county of Denver through Connects. And after that ends around September, I'll be able to analyze my capacity to take on larger consulting projects. Um, with that being said, um, it's a pleasure and a joy to be in this space, not only with my incredible cohort, but with all the mentors and supporters in this, in this Zoom call today. And um, I wanted to especially thank my mentor, Naomi, who couldn't be here today, um, Maria and Patrick, and then also my entire class again. So if you don't want to um, follow the success of the audiobook, you should definitely uh, send me a message or uh, here, a private message here, <laughs> or um, via my email, just saying that you'd love to hear some of my speaking engagements in the future. I appreciate you all, and thank you. Ooh, thank you, Kimberly. Great presentation. Great job. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, I think we have time for, for maybe one, one question. Hi, this is Scott. I'll quick question. Do you have a curious if you have a working title for your audiobook yet? Yeah, I've actually used intersections of me. Um, and in a lot of poetry I've used, it's been um, the concept of intersectionality is really common of these intersections of identity. However, um, I have been given advice that maybe I should make it more explicit that I'm really speaking to my experience as a Chinese and Puerto Rican woman. So um, it might be just the Latina Asian, it, those are some working titles. Cool. That's wonderful. Thanks so much, Kimberly. And we'll definitely, we're all excited to support you, your Kickstarter. Thanks for sharing that. Beautiful. And next up, we have Rebecca with Rivka. So just let me know whenever you're ready. Hello, I'm ready. <laughs> I can't see myself, am I okay? Um, hello, I'm Rebecca. Thank you, Kimberly. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, I, my capstone project is all about production. I am a fashion designer and my clothing line is called Rivka, which is Rebecca in Hebrew. Next slide. Uh, Rivka is a streamlined clothing collection for travel and leisure, consisting of five staple pieces. Next slide. And the ultimate goal is really to produce the line of five pieces. Um, but as I was kind of going through the program, I was also selling a lot of um, another product that I developed. So I decided to kind of step back from the collection and just kind of think about resources and uh, just sustainability in the fashion industry. Next slide. The, uh, the fashion industry of the biggest um, industries of waste. And um, that's due to fast fashion. I don't know if you've heard of fast, but brands like H&M, Forever 21, Zara, and they just, they produce at a very alarming rate. And they're, they're producing a lot of garments for people. And so what happens is people buy them and then they wear them once and throw them away. And so I just kind of started to think about my own fabric sourcing and what was what made sense and what I wanted to produce within my line. So next slide. So this is just a statistic on the amount of waste that is 
happening right now. It's an estimated 92 million tons of textile waste annually from the fashion industry, um, which is just really um, heartbreaking, I think. And I, I just didn't wanna be a part of that waste. So over the past couple of years, I've kind of looked at what I could do to kind of um, level that out and how I could use my skills to kind of contribute in a better way than just churning out things that are gonna get worn once and thrown out. Next slide. And so that is where Re-Rivka was sort of born. And this is my line of clothing that has been altered and upcycled. So I start with um, men's button-ups and crop them. So I'm creating a new garment out of a discarded previous one. And I really uh, focus on the fabrics. I try and find silks and cottons and cool patterns. Um, but these have really been resonating with people and I've been selling a lot of them. So I just decided that the production would kind of just go into that one piece. And from there I could figure out uh, how to produce more. Next slide. And so this is just kind of the, the process of one of the crops. This is a silk top. Um, and it started out on the left side there. And then I just figured out the dimensions and what works for a nice crop on, on most bodies. It's a longer crop and um, it just, it's worked for a variety of people. You can wear them open, you can wear them with high-waisted pants. Next slide. And then this is my new piece. Um, it's a chore coat and chore coats have been pretty popular lately. Uh, they are started out as a utilitarian jacket really for, uh, for laborers that they've sort of gained traction as a, a trendy kind of element now. And there's one behind me here. So it started out as a men's shirt, then I cropped the sleeves and with that excess turn that into the pockets. Um, so this garment is, I would say between 85 and 90% is reused in this way. I reattached the cuff again in the end. So um, it's a really, I don't know, I'm really proud of this design and just the way that I kind of utilized as, as much of the fabric as possible. So there's really not a lot of waste in this garment. Next slide. Um, so here I'm kind of just breaking down the process of the crop redesign. Um, this is the time it takes for one shirt. So finding the shirt, um, I'm going to different thrift stores in town. Um, I wash and line dry everything and then measure and cut every top and sew. So it's about two hours per shirt. And... I am fast, I'm fast over, thank you. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so with production help, I, I can really cut down like the time it takes. So the thing that I love the most is finding the shirts and kind of styling them. Um, but the sewing can be a little laborious and really takes time away from what I want to do, which is design. So I, have been testing a sewer and actually found one to help me start sewing these. Um, so now the time has been cut down to 30 minutes and then I'm gonna be paying a sewer $7 a shirt. Next slide. So this is kind of a price breakdown um, with my production help. So the raw material, material is $5. It's pretty inexpensive. I, um, I go on the half off days at the thrift store. And then uh, it's really more the labor that takes the most time. Um, the chore coat is a little bit more work because I am patterning this, repatterning the pocket. And so it just takes a little bit of time to figure things out and take things apart to match them up again. And then you have the wholesale price and the retail price. Next slide. And this is a little projection I did with my mentor, Petrie, thank you so much. Um, and it's 
kind of showing what the numbers look like for the holidays. So I should really start thinking about holiday now, which is new for me. <laughs> um, so that is, it's really cool to kind of go six months out. The, um, the table goes a little longer, but I couldn't put it on the slide. So just the amount that I can do is going to be a lot more with this help. So I'm just, I'm really excited to have a sewer to help me in this. And I think that from this, it's going to fund my original collection. Next slide. And so I have my pieces currently in FM Boutique on South Broadway, which I'm in the basement of right now. And next slide, Studio Colfax, which is on Colfax and Josephine, uh, owned by my sister, Sarah. It's a great little boutique. And then next slide, I am hoping to get into a few other shops. This is just a few that I found, but there's a lot of great shops within Colorado that I think would fit with what I'm trying to do. So I'm excited to kind of get myself out there more. And it's been great being uh, at FM because I have been selling them pretty regularly. And so I can see those numbers and I'm excited to expand with help. Next slide. And this is my collection that I am working towards. So I have a silk jogger. The crop tee is actually hand dyed. Um, I'm working on the jumper and then a kimono robe, which is out of silk and a wrap dress. And these are all kind of still in the working modes, but they will all be 100% um, cotton or silk, all materials that have, um, the end life in mind that break down and also that lasts really long. It's important to me to have really well-made quality clothing. So next slide. And this is my website. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to have a little, I had set up a coupon code for anyone interested. A lot of the crops on the site are sold out, unfortunately. Um, well, fortunately for me, but I'm going to update some more probably on Friday and the coupon code will be good through the weekend and it's TBA20 for 20% 20 off of anything there. So I think that is it. And thank you so much, um, especially to my mentor, Petrie. He really helped me get this together and has just been so supportive and willing to meet me and talk me off a cliff a lot <laughs> and Maria for always being there and just everyone in this uh, mentorship program. It's been a real pleasure to get to know everyone and thank you all for coming and supporting me. And thanks for all my family members <laughs> for being here. Yay, nice job. Your line looks so great. I'm so sad that you're sold out. <laughs> um, Awesome. Well, we have we have time for probably a couple of questions from our, our panelists. If anyone has any questions for Rebecca, I I have a question. Um, hi, this is Karen. Uh, thank you so much. What a beautiful presentation and what a beautiful line of clothing. Wow. Thank you. Um, my question is because uh, you were talking about your original collection. And then you were sort of inspired to do something about the fast fashion industry. And so um, the idea to create the sustainable line um, came out. And so I was just wondering if, um, if that is now embedded into your brand, the sustainability um, uh, angle, or is that just like a part of what you do and the, and the main collection that you're looking for is um, still going to be uh whatever um not maybe not that per, per se but I, I'm just curious how that yeah how that's that great, your brand that's a great question um the day they are kind of under just all under Rivka um I really have a lot of fun doing the upcycled pieces and they're really resonating with people so I think it'll just Like Rebecca might have froze. Rebecca, you can try turning your video off too. 
Sometimes that works. I don't know if you can hear us. That was a really great question. I was <laughs> curious. Yeah, maybe it. whenever she comes back, I'm so curious uh, what yeah. she does. It's so cool what she did. I know it's amazing. And like what a what beautiful pieces of clothing and presentation. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll hop in later and I think definitely hold on to that question. And if there's any more, maybe at the end we can we can get back to her. That was great. Awesome. Okay. Well, up next we have Jantir with J7's Kitchen. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, that was both of them are kind of hard to follow mm. behind. I was like, man, I was trying to stay underneath the time limit. <laughs> but hello, my name is Jan Tiffin. I'm the owner of J7's Kitchen. Uh, we specialize in soul food. Uh and foods like deep fried chicken and uh, deep fried catfish. Okay, we can go to the next one. My capstone, I wanted to start it off with marketing. That's kind of what I went into at the beginning. But later on in the class, I ended up figuring out that I kind of need to focus on financial finances. So I, I kind of did both of them. We can go to the next one. Uh, the capstone, kind of how I, what I was kind of saying in the previous post about how I started off with the marketing, I needed to find a permanent location so my customers would be able to come and find me. Um, and I ended up finding a permanent location. I'd be outside of the Denver Parks and Recs, right by the swimming pool. I'm just waiting for them to review my uh, application. Um, I needed to focus on my pricing just because of the food market, it did end up going up. And, um, you know, the prices on the food is just outrageous right now. So I had to make sure that I wasn't cutting myself out and I was making a little bit of money out of the situation. And then I needed to work on my uh, advertisement. I wanted to start posting more on my Facebook and Instagram so people do know where I'm at because before I wasn't really posting until after my events. Okay, we can go to the next one. Um, so after the class started going on, I ended up finding out that I need to work on my finances just because I had ended up going to get my taxes filed. And I thought just because I had this bag of receipts that the tax person was going to be able to help me out and organize it and get it all together. I started uh, realizing that I was unorganized and they told me that I need to go and find a bookkeeper or accountant. I'm still working on trying to find one, but I eventually ended up getting through all the receipts and organizing them and getting my taxes filed for the year. Um, and then I ended up working on my finance workbook. I had started off with Rocky Mountain in 2020 and I was a caterer then. And so my workbook, it was totally different than it is now. So I had to basically restart all over and I'm still working on that, but I'm like, it's almost there. And I feel like it's a lot better now, especially with me doing it the second time. Is making it where I'm more organized and I'll be ready for the next tax season for next year. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank God first for allowing me to, you know, do the business. I like to thank my mother and my sister for helping me. Um, I like to thank my daughters. Um, I like to thank uh my uh, teacher, my mentor, uh, my uh, my classmates, my mentor, and last but not least, I'd like to thank Rocky Mountain Financial Institute. And I, I know you guys were kind of unsure if I was going to fit in with this program at the beginning, just because I am a newer business with the food uh, truck 
But um, I just thank you guys for allowing me to do this opportunity. And I like to leave the class off with a quote. Uh, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are not determined to learn, no one can stop you. So I just say that just for us to just continue to keep on learning and taking these courses that we're taking to help build our, our businesses and taking us to the next level. And, you know, us continue to make uh, Colorado, Denver, Colorado great out here with our businesses. Keep going, you guys. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Gentier. Uh, Gentier, you took amazing. so much. Like, Proud of you, Gentier. Yeah, amazing. And congrats on getting a permanent spot, too. I know that was a huge goal of yours. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, we have some time for some questions. Gentier, which rec center are you going to be at? I'm waiting right now for the permit to uh, my application to get a review so I could get the permit. But I ended up talking to the lady and I don't know right now which one it is, but she basically said that the swimming pools, they need, um, they want to start introducing the food trucks because they don't have any food or any uh, people up there selling anything. So hopefully they end up putting me in front of one of the, the more, uh, what would you say? Uh, I guess we're getting more footwork, the most footwork at, you know. So I don't know. Hopefully it's a good pool. I don't know which one quite yet because the pools don't open up until June the 6th. So I still have a little bit of time. Awesome. Well, definitely let us know once you find out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Gentier, Gentier, what, what excites you the most about your business and your products? Um, just how far I didn't came. Like I said, um, I started with you guys back in 2020, but I was taking classes back from 2017. I've been taking courses. Like I started off by like selling breakfast burritos to companies. And it's just as far as I didn't came. And it's like, dang, I finally made it to the goal that I really wanted to, to do. You know, I've been saying it for years, writing it down trying to manifest it and it finally came and I'm like dang this is really what it is like I really didn't did it so I <laughs> guess I can say just seeing the big picture and seeing the outcome of it coming I have a follow-up question to that where now that you have a handle on your finances and you have achieved this huge goal is there like a big revenue or profit goal that you have for this year that you're really jazzed about now that you can do a little bit more planning ahead? Um, like even for the, uh, me being in front of the food trucks, I would like to sell at least 30 plates a day that I'm up there. So hopefully I'm making anywhere between um, six to 800. But even when I'm not up there, there's going to be a lot of uh, different events that's going on too th throughout the summer that I'm going to try to hit too. So it's not even going to be just the pool. It's going to be the events too that's going on. So hopefully I can even make more with the events too. Great. We have time for maybe one more question. If anyone has anything for Jantir. Great. You guys can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. My number is down there in my emails. Y'all can check me out on there and see what type of foods that I'm selling on there. So yeah, y'all go follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jantir. Amazing. Jantir, make sure to check out the chat because you've gotten a lot of um, a lot of wonderful responses for the past probably like five, six minutes. And that's for every entrepreneur after you're done presenting. Make sure to go back and, and read what everyone's been writing as you were speaking. Great job, Jantir. Awesome. Okay, and next up we have Sam with Denver Tour Club. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Sam here? Oh, there you are. I think you're on mute, Sam. Whoops, sorry. Here we go. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Sam Blumenthal, and I'm the founder, owner, director, and lead chaperone at Denver Tour Club. It's an adventure camp for kids ages 6 to 12. We go on day-long excursions on the weekdays of summer break, school holidays, and teacher planning days. And I've been doing this since 2015 when I found myself burned out from running another business, which if you've been with RMMFI for a while, you may remember, Lagrano Granola. I had a lot of fun building the granola business, but my passion for it didn't last too long after the launch phase. So I decided to scrap it and try another business. I knew whatever I did next had to be fun enough to get me through the likely slow growth to be expected from a solopreneur with a psychology degree. So I asked myself, what's the most fun you've had working and how can you make that a business? And the most fun job of my life was taking kids on field trips through a local rec center program. When I had the idea for Tour Club, it seriously hit me like a winning lottery ticket. I was so excited. I had been racking my brain trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And I was so excited when I realized I could pull off my own camp of nothing but field trips. So the first year I was living at home with my parents. Hey, mom and dad, if you guys are on the YouTube watching this. Um, So I was able to super bootstrap it. Thanks in part to them. We started walking and taking the RTD bus everywhere, which in hindsight seems ridiculous, but it worked. It was a lot of extra work, but it it worked. Um, Day one of summer two, we went to Pirates Cove, a kid's water park. And immediately after changing into our swimsuits and taking a group photo, lightning struck nearby and it started raining cats and dogs and they didn't have anywhere for us to go. Everyone had to leave. Our bus stop was a half mile away and two kids were having severe meltdowns. So in my panicked brainstorm, I luckily remembered Uber had been in town for a couple of years. So I gave my referral code to the other chaperone who'd never heard of it. And we were picked up a few long minutes later. I didn't have time to ask any of the parents for permission. So I spent the rest of the day bracing to get yelled at and run out of business. But surprisingly, nobody cared. So by the next year, that's how we were getting around. And then in 2019, somebody finally brought it to my attention that it would probably be cheaper to buy a van. So I've had a van since 2019. And as I mentioned, outside of summer, there are some trips, the weekdays of school holidays, teacher planning days, but the business is pretty seasonal. So what do I do during the off seasons? In 2015, I moved to California with the intention of getting rich quick, working for a cannabis operation, which unfortunately turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. The next year, I worked a temp job at the Department of Revenue, which, as you might imagine, was torture after running around playing outside with kids all summer. Then for the next few seasons, I returned to a previous calling of teaching swim lessons to babies. It was a much better fit, but it was still a far cry from the freedom of owning my own business. And I knew that Tour Club had the potential to be a more year-round operation, but between the excuse of the pandemic limiting beliefs and laziness. I couldn't bring myself to make it happen. Uh, So, and COVID, by the way, just made it an outdoor adventure camp, but it gave me the excuse to not pursue some of this other stuff that I'll talk about here in a minute. So at the beginning of, of this year, I was motivated to snap out of it. And I started looking for classes to take. And I was reminded about RMMFI's TBO, TBI, sorry, TBA program at the exact right moment. Which brings me to my capstone project, an exploration of additional revenue streams and determination of how to best test and implement. While I was secretly hoping to be assigned to a drill sergeant type of mentor, I had the good fortune of being paired with Jeff, aka the backcountry business coach. His approach gives much more of a self-help guru vibe. Early on in working together, we talked about my why. Why do I feel inspired to what? to do what I'm doing. As I already shared, having fun is a major motivation, but I'm also motivated by being part of a contribution to the greater good. I believe that happy childhoods can contribute to a happier world. This recognition helped me understand why I was not feeling energized to grow tour club in the direction that I was previously attached to, 
offering rides to Red Rocks concerts. I don't like driving at night, staying up late, or being around drunk people. So instead, much more in line with my why, I'm creating field trip experiences for adults. All of the same activities from the kids' camp will be available, paddleboarding, hiking, pickleball, etc. And then we'll also have some new offerings like restaurant food stops, comedy shows, ghost tours, history tours, yoga classes, cooking classes, creative writing classes, museum tours, and bingo halls, to name some of the most recent ideas. This is in line with my why because it's fun. And I believe that getting people out of their phones and into the real world with other humans can only make things better. So some of the excursions will be open to the public for people to come and make new friends and others will be sold as packages for people looking to host private trips for things like family reunions, bachelor parties, stuff like that. And if someone wants to customize a field trip or start completely from scratch, I'll have a menu of destinations and activities to choose from. To test this out, I'm inviting people to attend some trips either at cost or for free, depending on the experience, in exchange for using pictures of them in marketing and for getting their feedback and an online review. The, the other revenue stream I'm working towards in line with the happier childhood why and inspired by Jess's presentation is an online course with the potential title of Calming the Chaos with Kids, Tips for Keeping Them Happy and on Your Team. I'm creating a condensed version of this as a free download to incentivize people to sign up for the newsletter and we'll also share it with existing subscribers. And unless there's a lot of negative feedback from this, which I don't expect, but I'm always a little wary of, I'll use it as the foundation for a series of blog posts that I'll dive, that I'll use to dive into the psychology behind the tips and why they work. And then I'll use that to create an online course potentially. So for me, the most valuable component of this program was the camaraderie and accountability Business ownership can be lonely, and this program reminded me that it doesn't have to be. So thank you to Jeff, Maria, all the presenters, and all my classmates. It's been awesome. It flew by. Um, if anyone wants to be on that list to be invited to the test run field trips, please shoot me an email. You should see it up there on this screen. And then if any of you have kids ages 6 to 12 or no people in that target range uh, looking for summer camp options, there's also a coupon up there for $25 off. And there's coupons in general if you're signing up for more than two weeks at a time automatically. So that's all for me. Thanks, guys. Oh, so fun. Great presentation. That was awesome, Sam. So great. Love that. Well done, Sam. I have a lot of people signing up. <laughs> yeah, we have time for a couple questions. Uh, I have one for you, Sam. In your quest to expand to adult field trips, um, are you looking at things like multi-generational field trips where, um, like I know when my grandmother came to visit as a kid, it was always a problem of like, how do you entertain a seven-year-old and a 96-year-old lady in a wheelchair at the same time? Um, and I know that's a huge issue for a lot of families. Yeah, good question. So they're going to be offered for like the ones to come and meet new people that'll be open to the public. Um, those ones will be age specific, probably 18 and up or 21 and up. And if you wanted to do something more where you've got little kids and adults and it would be, need to be a private excursion, things can just get a little bit tricky when you have parents and kids with different parenting styles. So looking to make it as easy breezy of an experience as possible on those uh, public tours. I had a question also, Does that work? Um, so what's your, and obviously we're coming up to summer, you are coming up to your busy season. So what is, so I imagine that is affecting your plans of how you're launching this. So do you have kind of a timeline or kind of when you're targeting, testing these out and getting these going? So yeah, thank you. I did not include any of that in here. I just realized um, I'm going to be testing it out simultaneously through summer camp. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to have this up and running by the end of summer camp. So there will probably be some overlap, but the ultimate goal of this is to make it so I do have more of a business to operate once summer is ended. So 
by the end of August, September, for sure, I want it to be going more full speed. Um, I have a takeaway, Maria. Mm -hmm. Just a question. So um, what I did want to say about Sam is that um, the way that uh, this entrepreneur, like taking risks, pivoting, you know, going after the passion, changing his mind, you know, midstream. And then um, also, too, with uh, Kimberly Ford as well, how she um, has all these different facets of who she is, taking risks, doing kind of more than one thing associated with bigger projects. So I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm still maybe just focus on my one thing and I have all these offshoot ideas like, oh, I'd really like to do this. I'd really like to do this. But something pulls me back to say, you're still not done doing Octavia's or you still haven't brought it to its full light. And so I, by seeing this, that, that makes me see how um, we can, you know, the entrepreneur energy is, is about taking risks. And I think that Kimberly mentioned getting that steady paycheck, right? But the adventure of being an entrepreneur, pivoting, and then Kimberly said something that said being your whole self or, you know, showing all the facets, making all of those things very brilliant. And I just think that both of you guys uh, demonstrate that very well. It's inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, I think all of us probably have 100 ideas at a time. And it's hard to focus on one, but yeah, the more you can focus that energy before you go to the next thing, it's one lesson I've learned to be helpful. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Sam. And definitely would love to, I'm sure this group would love to stay up to date on when you have your adult offerings. <laughs> that sounds really exciting. Great. Well, let's uh, go on to our next presenter. We have Rochelle with Lacusa bookkeeping services. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. I uh, hope you are all doing well. It's so cool to see you all here. We are finally done. Uh, next slide, please. My name is Rochelle Lucusa, and I am the owner of Lucusa Bookkeeping Services. I am an alumni of class 21, and I am now a bookkeeper for nonprofit organizations and the small businesses um, that they serve in the area. Um, next slide, please. My capstone project basically was a focus on owner productivity and intentionality towards operational processes and defining a niche uh, market. Um, as many of you probably know, according to the SBA, 30% of businesses will fail between years two and five of business, of being in business. And so actually October 2022, I would have been, I would be, I would have been in business, well, I will be in business for five years. So what a better time than to look at where I'm going and where my uh, business is actually evolving. When I started with RMMFI, I was a jack of all trade. I graduated with a business degree um, and an emphasis in international business at the time. And I was pursuing my master's in HR. So if a client had an HR project, I was working on that. If a client had some admin work and data entry projects, I was working on that. And then I finally um, discovered QuickBooks and got certified and became everybody's uh, favorite uh, bookkeeper. And that's when all hell broke loose. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, this is um, my the growth of my business. So I started it in 2017. Everything was nice, small, and steady. It was a leap of faith. I was in a place in my life where I did not know where I was going to go and really trying to realign some of my personal objectives, career objectives. And so the business was growing steadily. I have been a member of the MFI community for a while. So I just stayed around, no marketing strategies, no sales processes. And most of my uh, work came from um, word of mouth referrals. And then comes 2020, we are in the pandemic and most businesses are closing down or going through all of these hurdles, trying to maintain 
some type of clientele. And this is when my business boomed and I became completely overwhelmed. I tripled my income in the space of a year without any preparation. And uh, it was great because I had more income and helped me to achieve um, some of my personal goals. And this is when I realized that pairing basically hard work with RMMFI was the key to success. Next slide, please. The end of 2021 comes and uh, my father falls very ill. So I am experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of, um, a lot of stress, just a lot of things um, personally that were not going right. And so at the end of 2021, actually in November, my father passed away and um, I had a very hard time to uh, decide where my business was going to go, where my life was going to go. Was this even purposeful at all? And so I realized that my business can only be as healthy as I am as a business owner. A few weeks before my father passed away, actually, I met up with Rob and he talked to me about the TBA program. So after a lot of support from my family, conversation with mentors, my RMFI community, I decided that this was something that was worth pursuing. So it was time to get to work and uh, actually jump into the TBA program. So I'm in March, I joined the TBA program and we had to learn about processes because uh, Rochelle did not really know about processes. <laughs> Next slide, please. When I first started with all of my clients, my process, it, my process consisted of maybe four steps. I had a consultation, I sent a proposal, it was signed, returned, I started working and then I build my clients when the project was completed. And 2022 and moving forward with everything that I've learned from the TBA, I've actually implemented some tools that have enabled me to find an easier pace in the way that I'm doing my work. And I'm finding myself very much more, much more organized. I have set up Calendly. So most of my clients can now set up their own appointments. I am developing an intake form with specific questions relating to projects to avoid burnout and me being overwhelmed in some of my projects. I have implemented, uh, thanks to a Lady a CRM program. So now all of my clients and the clients that are actually in my pipeline, um, I know who they are and I don't keep all of that information in my head as smart as I think as I am. It's not the most effective way to run a business. I am developing my proposals in conjunction with my customers and also uh, moving forward for projects or work-based project works project based work projects that are on a package basis basically are due with a 50% deposit and then the remainder is due at the end of the project. Sorry, I couldn't get that out. Next slide, please. So this is what I'm going to work on moving forward. So during the TBA, this is what I worked on, an automated scheduler, implementing Calendly, a new CRM, and I'm also using a project management tool software called Asana. Um, in the next couple of months here, I will be focusing on um, clients who are more community or nonprofits that are more community oriented so that I can serve them um, because that is my passion. I need to upgrade my website, marketing and social media content. And I also want to refresh my branding. If you were to look at my website right now, it's really cold. There's not even a picture of me on there. And I believe that I'm a very friendly, professional and reliable bookkeeper. And then um, what I am going to continue to work on is uh, my client intake form. Different clients need different things. And so I want to make sure that that, um, that that intake form is always as um, specific as it needs to be. Uh, work on developing scope of works, detailed service agreements, and also improving my billing processes. Next slide, please. These are some of my uh, future ob objectives. I would like, I need to improve my equipment. And so I hope to use a TBA loan for that. I will also break down client work in monthly, quarterly, and annual tasks. I realize that the time of the year when I am the most overwhelmed is um, around tax season. Um, initially, I thought that my burnout around that time was because of the, the amount of work, but I also noticed that it was because of my lack of organization and the lack of processes that uh, were not basically in place for me to be able to do that my work. Now that I'm able to see that, okay, next year, the first quarter of the year is the busiest time of the year for me. There's some things that I can put in place to not be overwhelmed and basically 
uh, provide my most effective services. I will also put in place a client satisfaction intake survey. I think it's really important to get that uh, feedback from your customers, from your clients, making sure that we are on the same page, making sure that they are satisfied with the service that you're providing for them and also the communities that they're serving. And I think that because um, this journey is worth it, uh, the hard work is worth it through all of the adversity is worth it. I really want to pursue um, this idea of building this bookkeeping firm and help my community and help these nonprofits who help people in the Denver uh, metro area. Next slide, please. I want to take the time to thank uh, my family uh, specifically for always supporting me, my goals, through everything that um, we have gone through in this past season. I have had the absolute best mentor. I will say it proud and loud. Um, Ethel has been instrumental in my success during this um, TBA program, and I'm so grateful. And then the entire staff, my mentors, um, all of my entrepreneur colleagues, this cohort, it's been just so amazing to see how much throughout the year, since 2017, I joined RMMFI and my life has changed for the best. So I'm so grateful for you all. And if you have any questions, um, if you're looking for a bookkeeper, you will be put on my pipeline um, of upcoming new clients in my CRM so that I can be organized and make sure that I can um, respond to your um, demands accordingly. Thank you. Yes, amazing Michelle. work, Rochelle. So good. Incredible. Oh. <clears throat> so amazing. So amazing. Yeah, are there any questions? I think we have time for one or two. I have a question. Um, hi, Rochelle. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you two alternatives. You can answer it whichever version of it you'd like. Okay. So uh, either kind of going back to, from, to the last presentation, what is your why? Mm -hmm. um, of why you do this and why you're like invested in your or passionate about your business or you can um, what excites you the most about uh, your business and where you're going absolutely I think my why is um, to be honest it, it it really is recent at first it was really about hustling making money I was in a very um, in a place of transition where I did not know where I was going my life had no direction I had lost everything, uh, finding a lot of value in my scholastic and professional accomplishments. And then when you lose everything, you kind of lose yourself. And so I think entrepreneurship has helped me to remember that um, I am resilient and I want to empower people who go through adversity to know that through these businesses, they can become successful. Um, I think I think about my father and his life and his legacy. Uh, my parents immigrated from the Democratic Republic of the Congo to France back in um, the 70s. And there's just such a powerful story of overcoming. I think it's a land where there's so much wealth, but yet the people don't have any opportunity and they cannot succeed. And so I feel like for me, it's almost a vindication journey that I want to um, kind of put out there. If we have the right resources and we have access to those, the right opportunities, then we can become something. So I think that's what my why is. I really want to empower people um, to know that um, they can become um, what it is that they want to become. I think that's the mission of RMMFI as well. And that's why this organization is so dear to my heart. Amazing. Thank you, Rochelle. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story and, and where you're going and how you got to where you are. It's really wonderful. And I think you'll have a lot of people signing up <laughs> to be your clients. Awesome. And next up, we have Mark with Meraki Custom Cakes. Just let me know whenever you're ready, Mark. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Mark with Meraki Custom Cakes. Um, mine is going to be really simpler. <laughs> Sorry, simpler because, um, yeah, well, uh, I don't really know how to start. It's uh, I worked with John, who was an amazing mentor. I had uh, an, an idea originally to go into this capstone, which was to uh, just revamp my website because... Um, because yeah uh, gosh sorry um so 
I was going to revamp my website and take a different direction with my business. Um, I have been, I guess, let's go to the next slide, sorry. Um, my strategy ended up being an exit strategy for my business. Um, it's, I don't even like, I was completely overwhelmed. I had cash flow issues. Um, so I needed to take care of myself mentally, stabilize my finances, gain an object, objective look into my business and provide space for me to reevaluate my business. And um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I'm just like, I think what real, like just going back to Rochelle's um, presentation when she talked about your business being as healthy as you are, like that is pretty spot on with me. Like I'm unhealthy due to my business. So something needed to change. So uh, next slide, thanks. Uh, so with John's help and Maria's in RMMFI, I, uh, I determined some smart goals to exit my business. So I have um, lucky in that getting business is not my, um, I don't have a problem getting business. Like I have a problem keeping up with the demand. And so it was, it was tough because I had to stop at a certain point and just say, I cannot take any more business. So um, at that point, it was maybe like March, just as I was getting into the, the, the TBA program. I'm also a, a graduate of the Rocky Mount, the RMMFI bootcamp, which really helped my business as well. I, um, I've got, so what I did, I've got orders through December, but I'm just not taking anything on. So in the meantime, I needed to find an income producing job. Um, and I gave myself a deadline to be 518. Uh, and so I set, you know, some goals for like phone calls, applications and things like that. Um, and John Geese, my amazing mentor was really, helpful with um, me gaining structure and, 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 and you know, doing walks and, and helping me be accountable and stuff like that. Uh, next slide, please. So things that got in the way, well, so things that got in the way or could have gotten was, I mean, it's just like my laptop died, which was, it was to me sort of the icing on the cake, if you will, no pun intended, but it was like, everything has just been going wrong. Like last year in, in sort of in, in giving you a, a, I guess a little history into my business. Last year I did all the things, I got the bookkeeper. I, I, um, I was going in a really good position, but, but something happened and I just, I just had to stop. So anyway, but on that note, like the RMNFI gave me a really awesome laptop to like use for the course. So that was great, you know, and all their resources really helped. Um, me being easily distracted was difficult. Um, I was be like, sorry, I don't know, like being in this course, but trying to exit my, my business and also trying to find new employment was so conflicting. Um, and so, again, John really helped uh, me with like morning medication, medita and medication, no, sorry, that's me. meditation techniques. Um, time management is huge. I am not an organized person. I'm very disorganized. And so me being an entrepreneur um, has been difficult. In, in we did have a, a speaker who really talked about controlling chaos, which really was was good for me. So, um, next slide, please. Thanks. So yeah, I mean, capstone success. I really did what I set out to do. I found a part time job. Um, I I had like three many. I'm sorry, several interviews and things, but I just need something like super simple and like where I just don't get burned out right now. Um, and I found that. Uh, so anyway, um, so then I had to like, you know, change my website and my uh, social media and all that stuff and just let people know kind of what's going on. Um, the six, I really was hoping to gain some clarity through the, uh, through the 
what am I trying to say, the, the course, which I did, I, I guess for me, it may seem like I'm all over the place, I am, but like the thing is, is that it's been six years of operating this business and I, I learned how to do this like on, on the fly. And so it's been tough, like that's how we all are. It's, I don't think I did anything extraordinary, but it's just, I haven't had time to really stop and sort it out. It has supported me for the past six years. And so there are times when you have to do things for money that, you know, like you would take jobs that you just normally wouldn't, or you know that you don't want to do, but you just have to do it because you just need to survive. So it's been tough. I'm still unsure about the future of my business, but I know that taking this step back um, will, is, is what I need to do at this point. So um, next slide, if there is, I think there is one. And then that's just it. This is, these are just some images of cakes I've done and throughout the slide and, um, and yeah. <laughs> so, and all, I just wanna say, I'm so thankful and grateful for, of course, John, my mentor, Maria for keeping us going and keeping us upbeat through this and just RMMFI in general, because you guys have been there. You've been awesome from the beginning and you've always, just um yeah you know so yeah uh it's been good it's been good it's been eye-opening and it's been a lot but um it's been worth it so thanks thanks so much mark so so proud of you um for making the decision that's best for you yeah thanks yeah i think we have time for so maybe one, one quick question for mark hi mark this is Kari. Hi. Um, wow, what an inspiring presentation. Um, first of all, I have never heard of designing, um, a, a, an exit strategies elegant as, as this one. And so I just wanted to say that, um, it's really, I, th it's amazing that you were participating in this program, uh, during, during this time and during this decision and you're, you obviously created an exit plan that that just worked for your customers, worked for you, and really graceful exit. So that's my comment. I just wanted to say th thank you for sharing that and um, great reminder, you know, to because our businesses, uh, you know, are born, live, and die like humans, you know. So it's it's a great reminder, like how an exit could be just like just feel, I mean, I'm sure it didn't feel easy for you, but, but really graceful like that. Um, my question, you alluded to, um, exiting and then you alluded to, uh, going like pa pausing. Do you at this point, and then you said, you know, you're not quite sure. Are you planning at least in this interim time, are you going to keep the website? Are you going to take the website down? Or are you going to keep, keep it live, but just have sort of like a we're on pause message or how are you leaving it in the, um, to, to your, to the external facing? Yeah. Oh. So that is a good question because again, it's so conflicted. It's like, there's so much a part of me that like, I'm just fried. I'm like done. I like even cakes in general, anything to do with it gives me anxiety. It stresses me out. It just does not make me happy anymore. And it hasn't for a long time. In fact, I've got a wedding this Friday that I'm delivering and I literally had a nightmare about it. That like, it just like, it's just, so I don't know how to honestly answer that. Part of me just wants to just walk away completely, but I wonder that with a break and some time off and like, if, if I'll gain the passion again, um, because it started as a hobby and then it became a business and we all know how, what happens or what can potentially happen. And that's what did, I lost, my 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 why i guess my motivation my my love for it i mean the business name meraki cuz meraki means to do something with soul creativity or love and to put something in put put yourself into your work and what i didn't realize was that i was doing that i was putting too much in like i like I gave all I had and it, it's tough because it's business but it's art and it's food. it's just a lot of different like um just a lot of different components and so yeah it's just been I don't know I so I left it just like I'm taking a break right now and I really don't know what that means for my business I don't know what that means for me 
I hope that answers the yes, question. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Really. really appreciate you just being honest with us and sharing your story and where you are. And just know that, you know, I think this whole community here is definitely cheering you on and has your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I feel that. And so that's really what's kept me going. And plus, I have a really good family support and friend support. And I'm, I'm very lucky in that. Um, but yeah, it's still tough. <laughs> so yeah, thank you yeah. for listening and understanding. You know. And thanks, John, for putting up with my craziness. <laughs> so all right. Way to go, Mark. Thanks for, for sharing. That was great. Awesome. Yeah. And next up, we have Rhea with good food, good living. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mara. Um, good evening, everybody. And thank you for being here with us on our TBA presentation and graduation. We finally made it. <clears throat> um, I'm Ria. I'm the owner and founder, Innovative Chef for Good Food, Good Living. It's an off catering business that I started back in 2009 about that time, but it wasn't actually a catering business, nor a, it was more an informative website that you would be able to find information on how to take care of your health as you, as some of our um, participants and um, colleagues have mentioned that we need to take care of ourselves. And that's something that I know it's possible through good food and it started evolving with time, with time as to, and then I came into the RMF5 class of 27 as to out, outline and to outreach on how to run my catering business. Next slide, please. Why execute um, to recreate my story brand as a capstone project. It was because I felt that my, that people, potential customers didn't really feel the concept of what I was doing with Good Put the Living and that they couldn't put together that healthy food is actually good for you and delicious because they always associate healthy food with being bland, boring, tastes awful, and tastes like cardboard or sandpaper. Next slide, please. Here I have recreated a three client personification. Lara is a working mom of two, also an entrepreneur, and she is guilty of not, and she feels guilty for not being able to prepare and cook all the meals for her family. She only has one week. She has a weekend to just cook box pancakes for her family. Pete is a musician. He's 27 years working as a community professor, music professor in a community college, as well as performing through four nights in the local venue. So he's trying to look and how to prepare healthy meals. And this is where um, Good for the Living um, actually will help him to prepare and find the right plant for his lifestyle. Elena is a young single mother that lives in a desert neighborhood with her parents. And she is looking to find good recipes to help her um, support the healthy lives um, to import or to maintain that healthy lifestyle that she always dream of on a set income. Next slide, please. I also, my catering will actually support and social corporate and formal events which will, which I also bring people together in the greater metro area and give a continuing trend too. So healthy doesn't really mean to be boring. Healthy means to having delicious meals. It doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be refined fats and 
um, unhealthy ingredients like GMOs and non-sustainable raised farm animals and vegetables and ingredients. Next slide, please. Here are my cooking courses that I have developed over time. The art of the art of flavor, which will consist of teaching, learning about how to use the simplest in spices and herbs to create that delicious and stable and flavorful meal and dish. The art of Mexican cooking actually gives you that ability to cook the authentic Mexican meal along with how to make tortillas from cooking the maize, maize and tamales salsa, along with knowing the one signature dish of all 32 Mexican states. Healthy, tea, healthy cooking will actually elaborate and consist of detoxifying not only your body, but also preparing your mind first before you go into that selfie um, way of thinking and eating because of all the bad habits that we have created along our lifestyle, the way we grew up, the way we continue the lifestyle that we grew up and, and preventing and helping you prevent all the diseases that we have inherited with that lifestyle. Next slide, please. Um, material wise, um, this is our actual, oh, I think we're missing up. Oh no, this is, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is my marketing material that we, that my daughter actually redesigned. This is our banner and our postcards and business cards. Of course, I created a new, color for our color scheme for my business and my website even though it's still on the wireframe design part and here you could see my social handle which is just my social handle the before and after now next slide please and with the help and actually the help of just Kathy, Eric, and Khan's courses, I was able to foresee the future of Good for Good Living. Next slide, please. Uh, by actually monitoring my booking, by following up, even though I know this is not a real accurate of what my financial statement is at this point, um, we were, I was able to analyze and proceed that if I book 10 catering events a month and have 10 cooking courses a week that I will be able to project what will be resulting. Next, please. Next slide, please. Into my dream kitchen. This is my dream kitchen that will be actually, if I work hard and consistently and developing all of and succeeding to obtain my goals five to three years I'll be having my dream kitchen where we'll be creating about 25 new jobs it also will consist of having three next slide please three halls one that will be specifically as a buffet the other two will be uh, informal, formal, and a more formal seating occasion with buffet style. Next slide, please. Now, this is the conclusion of who I am and what I've been doing in this capstone project, along with my busy lifestyle. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to practice with neither of my uh, colleagues and my mentor this following for this presentation. I, a stray cat unfortunately <laughs> did um, attack my daughter and bruised her up really bad in her face. And this is, this is, you could also follow me the first, take a screenshot of all this. The first, the first QR code is actually my business card. And the second one is takes you to my website and the other two are my if you want to follow me in my social handles, Instagram and Facebook. 
Thank you to everyone. Thank you to my mentors, Mara and RMFI, my family, for supporting me in this new adventure. Woo! Yes, Ria! Good job, Ria. Yeah, that was awesome. We'll want to see your new kitchen when it's done. Um, I think your food is so good. <laughs> yeah, Ria just catered for RMFI um, earlier this week. Yeah, I think we, I want to be a little bit mindful of time because um, I know we're only going till eight. So we I think we have time for one quick question. Well, I have a takeaway. Um, I think the use of personas was, was really strong. I think the more that we can put it, ourselves in our customers' shoes, you know, try to figure out what your target customers are in, you know, and then figure out what your ideal customer is. Um, I think it's, that's a good, it was a good use of, of that. And um, just wanted to comment on that. So good job. Yeah, amazing Thanks. visuals. Yeah. Great job, Bria. That was wonderful. Thank you. And next up, we have Annabelle with Preserve. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Um, I'm ready. Thank you, Maria. Hi, everyone. We made it. Congratulations. Um, my name is Annabelle. My company is Preserve. We make healthy, holistically focused frozen pet treats. Our frozen superfood love bites are the perfect way to supplement pets' diets with superfoods disguised as treats. My, uh, oops, sorry. Oh, I cannot prod that. Um, next slide, please. Um, I'm actually going to take a little detour in, in light of some of everybody's personal um, revelations this evening that I've actually been very inspired and touched by. So for me, my capstone project idea is basically re researching the viability of a pet retail concept I've had for maybe a decade and um, basically deciding between either a mobile concept versus the traditional brick and mortar. Um, I decided to move towards mobile in my head and plans and everything like that as a result of the pandemic in 2020 and everything. And, you know, I just saw traditional brick and mortar kind of dying and going nowhere. So I kind of was trying to think of a little more of an innovative retail concept other than a standalone store, for instance. Um, the other I, reason why I chose this project was, I mean, I could have chosen a million things like accounting and that's really an area I need to work on and, and clean up. But I decided to kind of go for the big project um, because I wanted to have a goal an actionable goal I can work towards. So um, I also found myself a little bit in the first year of business and then even a little bit of last year because I'm so small and not super well funded and I'm also always impatient for growth, a little bit putting myself in a smaller category. So I thought it's, it's important right now, this is the time to really move in that direction and be aspirational. So basically, um, why did I choose this project? That was one of the main reasons, but also I, I, I definitely have some great insights after being in business almost two years, and that's coming from a regular customer base, which is, you know, DTC, and also from um, my small wholesale business, the insights I get from my retail, pet retailers. I pretty much, you know, there's two areas of growth I can attack, and that's wholesale and DTC. When I look at thinking about wholesale, you know, there's we're not regular pet food. So we're not, that's not something someone's coming to me all the time, every day for it's a need. It's like coffee. It's almost like a commodity, right? For your pet. Um, we're ancillary products. So we really have to do, I really have to do whatever I can to get the name out there. And, and um, so I decided I view, I view retail right now as the best way to significantly grow my business. Um, and that is pretty much by expanding the different product lines and being able to reach more customers with that retail location. Um, I'm not going to get into what the retail store will allow me to do. It's basically, I also have a desire. I hear everybody talking about it. You will have dips and passion and where we started and get lost along the way. Um, that hasn't quite happened to me yet, but it has happened in my last baking business. Um, so... I, I really have an urge to, to flex my creativity. I have like literally four other product lines behind this that I really want to get into. So my focus is growth this year. Um, okay, so, uh, and if the, pro if the project works, uh, you know, I, the concept works, I'd love to franchise it. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, okay, let's get into containers. So this is the mobile portion that I was researching. I really got inspired um, when I took um, a workshop at Colorado Lend Resource. A keynote speaker was the CEO of a, a container company based right here in Denver. Um, he has 10 years of experience. Uh, he has built his business into it, customizable, um, beautiful containers, really focusing also on food and bev business. So, you know, I checked out a lot of his work. I checked out, you know, I, I talked to him and it's just very inspiring. So that, why I choose a container was basically, again, because I wanted to see like what other a traditional um, retail concepts there were. Um, I'm going to quickly go through some of the facts that I found uh, alarming and interesting, um, for instance, cost, that's obviously one of the big factor. They range wildly, it depends on many factors. You can just buy the shell if you want. The shell can cost anywhere from five to eight K. You can um, customize it. So that means size of windows, you can put a roof on it, you can you know, add a, roof, um, a patio, um, or they will turn out a completely turnkey product for you. That would be anywhere from 50 to 100 K. So why the hell are they so expensive? That's really what um, I was asking and asking. I asked about three different manufacturers, that one in Denver, Roxbox, one in Atlanta, and one in Cali. And it's basically when you choose to build a container, they use the same materials, the same guidelines. They're inspected just like as if you were they were constructing a regular house for a commercial building. So um, they are kind of meant to last forever. They have many sustainable factors versus like building with wood. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it because I know I'm running out of time, but there are two different types of structures when choosing containers. There is a permanent structure versus a mobile structure. So basically, when I did my research, I think if I were to choose a, a mobile um, retail concept, it would be a mobile container, which basically sometimes means it has to be on wheels. And um, every city, every state has different uh, designations and allowances for containers. So that's going to be a little bit challenging if I ever want to um, administratively, at least if I ever want to franchise the concept. Um, I'm not going to get into those details. Boring. Um, about one minute left, Annabelle, just so you oh, know. Oh, wow. Okay. Then I'm going to skip back. Basically, um, the pros of it, you know, the one thing that I realized in my research is the width of the container is is only eight feet. You put in walls, it's only six feet. So that I, I immediately got like claustrophobic just thinking about it. So um, next slide, we'll just move into brick and mortar, which will be a really um, simple slide. Um, I'm actually leaning as a result of this project and this research towards brick and mortar now. I was very scared of it. You know, it's a big risk in terms of money and my, you know, my concept. Uh, that's not quite tested yet. But um, I would look for a 500 to 1,000 square foot space at, at 70 to 20 a square foot. That is going to look you know, pretty much go up to a monthly rent of 700 to 1666 in that square footage range. The rent is cheaper for mobile, but um, will obviously require more operational and interior design course, uh, costs. Uh, next slide. Uh, financial projections, uh, we'll go into cost first. They are very, very high. Um, what I what I realized when I ran the cost initially for both mobile and brick and mortar, they are not too far away from each other, the cost. So largest cost, obviously, it's tiny. I don't know if you can see it, it's going to come from rent in a traditional brick and mortar, or it'll come from the cost of the, uh, the container, or if you finance it, whatever. Um, Capital equipment costs are going to be also right up there. That's going to come from ice cream machines, soft serve machines, and freezers. Uh, next slide, please. Revenue and profit. I mean, I projected, I tried to be, you know, I, I was the best case scenario at this time. You know, year one, looking at 155K in revenue. Um, profit's going to be 120. Uh, sorry, cost is at 34. And, 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 Fixed costs are at 94K. Uh, net profit for the first year is only 26K. So what does that mean? That means we're gonna need to, I need to sell a ton of petrols. I don't believe that's just gonna do it. I think I have to diversify, add more product lines, sell it, you know, resell other pet accessories and just add different things, especially merch for humans, coffee and tea, just whatever we can do to upset up, 
uh, upsell every transaction. Uh, next slide, please. Um, is this concept franchisable? Um, that's not something, it's what I learned actually about franchising, it's fascinating in its own um, industry in and of itself, is that before it used to be thought a franchise concept has to be tested 15 years, it has to be profit, you know, it has to be proven after 15 years. That was the goal. The criteria is different now. You can be in the ideation stage and you can have a franchisable concept. So that was good to hear. Um, you can basically have two options. You either hire a franchise development company who will take care of everything from start to finish. They are, it is extremely expensive because the profit will be pretty big if it works. So the cost will be 50 to 250 K for that. If you do it on your own, my I spoke with my um, nephew who's actually a very experienced restaurant um, operator and he has just the past few weeks started the process of franchising his business and told me I'm not gonna go through a consultant, but he recommended that I one should, um, but because he's not going and he sees how difficult it is, um, just there's so many complexities involved. Cost without a consultant is 50K, still very high. That's going mostly towards legal and accounting fees and a little bit towards your trademark. Um, okay, about okay. 10 so, more seconds or so. <laughs> okay, um, next uh, slide is funding options. Those are what's listed. I took a great funding op uh, options panel at the Denver Met uh, Metro SBDC. There are amazing resources here in the state of Colorado that I'm probably going to go for. I'm going to do a multi tongue approach and I'm going to probably launch a crowdfunding. Um, I'm going to go for grants and I'm pretty much going to go for the Thrive Loan, but I will be talking to you online soon. Um, and that's okay. Next slide, please. What I took away from Cap the Capstone project was basically being forced to like make the time and sit down and research this project and what the costs are involved. So I know like, do I even want to move in that direction? Like, is that going to be my ultimate goal? That is my dream. Um, it's been like that for a while. So um, the other thing is I continue to use the financial workbook for little things and small. So if it's whether I'm going to launch a new product and to assess the viability, cost, revenue, et cetera, or if I'm looking at a huge project like this. Um, last uh, slide, please. Um, there's my website, social media. I'm gonna be at Six Farmers Markets this season. Um, I'm trying to expand outside of Denver and Boulder Metro. I'm gonna be in NOCO, in Fort Collins. I'm gonna be in Golden and we'll be popping up um, as I you know, will continue to hire people. Um, I wanna thank Rimfi for all your support. Um, a personal shout out to Maria for your support. I think you know what I'm talking about. Laura, I'm so sorry. My mentor, we didn't get to meet as much as possible, but I appreciate your time. And thank you. Thank you to all the other entrepreneurs. You really, really inspired me. Great Yay. job, Annabelle. Thanks so much for sharing. That was Amazing, great. Annabelle. Good job. <laughs> was uh -huh. Awesome. Great. Um, I just want to be mindful of our time. I know we have about 30 minutes left and I want to make sure everyone has a chance to present. Um, so let's go on to Adrian. Just let me know when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. Um, yeah, this is going to be a challenge to summarize six, uh, three months in six minutes. So well, let's give it a shot. Um, I'm Adrian, and my business is Mountain Herbalism. And myself, along with my co-teachers, uh, we run seasonal outdoor education for adults. And the ultimate sort of underlying goal, the why of the business is we really aim to reconnect humans with local landscapes through the study of plants. And we run a bunch of classes, but the flagship program and the one that I was really focusing on with the um, RMMFI program is the field botany course. And it's a big commitment. It's a three month commitment and students sign up to do weekly all day field classes. Um, so there's 11 all day field trips and 10 evening lectures. And we focus on sort of three main subjects. We focus on plant ID, because if you're gonna be harvesting food, uh, plants for food and medicine, you wanna make sure you have the correct plant. Uh, we also focus on ecology 
and sustainable wild harvesting practices. So if you uh, are gonna be in relationship with these plants, how can you give back? How can you encourage their thriving over time as you benefit from them? Um, and then finally herbalism, which is the study of um, how to use plants for medicine. So obviously this is a big commitment for students. And in addition to the um, sort of more objective curriculum goals I just outlined, there's also sort of this hidden bonus where students really walk away with a sense of connection and community, both with the landscape of the Rocky Mountains uh, ecosystems and also with each other. And this is a slide of us up in the, out on the Western slope harvesting and eating wild huckleberries. Um, next slide, please. So all of this sounds like pretty dreamy, right? So we build all this momentum around knowledge, around community, around healing. And then the summer ends and all that momentum just gets dropped. And this is actually a photo I took during the very last class of the botany season last year. Um, and so this was a time when I was really thinking about this loss of momentum. And from a business perspective, this is not great because this is a very niche business and our ideal customers are both hard to find and expensive to find. I pay my co-teachers to interview every student extensively to make sure they're a good fit for the program. And repeat customers would provide financial stability. And from a more intuitive perspective, um, we develop a lot of love and connection with our students. And all of the co-teachers I hired myself feel like we have a lot more to offer, a lot more than we can teach in just this three month course. So next slide, please. So this is the uh, foundation for the capstone project, which is to develop a second year botany program, um, which is kind of a huge project. <laughs> so just looking um, sort of at the, at the broad uh, goals of the capstone, one was to de de design those overarching curriculum goals. Um, one was to get the program on the website because that's gonna really require me to be clear on what the course is, how to describe it, what we're teaching, what the costs are, what the dates are, who's teaching it, who's the, who are the instructors. And then uh, last but certainly not least, designing the budget and marketing, and those really go hand in hand. Can we, can we make this work financially for the business? Um, and a key part of that is to have a large enough first year program, knowing that you, know, you never get 100% um, transfer to the second year program. So you have to have a large enough first year program to be able to um, have a bank of students for that second year program. So that's another piece of the marketing plan. Um, next slide, please. So the first thing I did was I sent out a um, survey to all of my former students and a certain percentage of them responded. This sort of had two goals. One was just to send them a bunch of questions that I was trying to consider for myself. I'm only gonna highlight a couple of the questions here for you, um, but it was more extensive than this. and. Um, this, this sort of like sneaky side goal of this was to really alert all students <laughs> that the, this program was being developed because we're, I'm specifically asking for feedback from the very people who would be you know, qualified to take this class since they had been through the program before. Um, so, and I just, you know, this, uh, without getting into too much depth here, um, I was actually pretty surprised who they wanted to study with versus who they didn't want to study with. So it's, it's really good that I asked this question. Um, next slide, please. And then I had, um, so with those people who sort of won the race of the student vote, um, I was able to have one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, paid uh, chats with each of these potential teachers, both to just get their feedback on what they wanted to teach and also to get their preliminary um, commitment to the dates of the program and to the concept of the program. Uh, next slide, uh, next slide, please. Um, I was also really trying to figure out what the best format was. The first year program is all uh, one day field trips because we don't really wanna to get too far from Denver because we wanna be able to get back by that night. And I was really hoping for the second year program to be all overnight so we could go way deep into the woods. Um, but with the vote, we ended up doing a hybrid uh, program that had both day trips and overnight since more people did want those day trips. Um, next slide, please. Um, and I also asked people a lot about what curriculum they were interested in and was like relieved to find <laughs> that they were interested in learning what I was interested in teaching and specifically that the highest vote was uh, for more advanced herbal medicine training, which is definitely by far and away my area of expertise um, and where my background comes from. Uh, next slide, please. And last but not least, uh, some work went into developing some spreadsheets, trying to answer these questions of like, how many students at minimum would we need to just run the program next year and see how it goes without losing money? Or how much money do I want to pay myself? How much money do my co-teachers want to make? 
what's the ideal group size and how, what would the profits be for that? What are all those hidden expenses? Um, and like how many students would be too many? <laughs> you know, how many students would start to erode the quality of teaching? Because we like to, to teach in small groups so that we can have that um, community feel to our classes. Um, next slide, please. So this all culminated in the um, website being up. So if you want to check this out, it's um, www.mountainherbalism.com. And so um, if you want to read all the details I didn't have time to get into, you can go to the, the website and read all about the curriculum and um, the dates and the cost and all that kind of stuff um, there. And um, this is like a little bit up for wiggle room still because we're not going to start accepting deposits until next fall, but at least gives it uh, the sort of like the... Um, uh, from a marketing perspective, it gives it the energy to start now. And I really wanted to launch the website piece before the start of this program, which is next week. So I know a lot of us are feeling like the relief of being done with our MMFI, but I'm actually starting um, this year's botany program. It'll be my sixth year running the program next week. And we have um, 16 people signed up. So that'll be great. So if even half of them continue, we'll have eight people, which is our minimum needed to run the advanced botany class. So I'm really hoping that this uh, works out. And I really wanted to launch this website before the start of the class so that people could sort of start the program knowing there was a second year and sort of having that in mind. So if they're enjoying what they're doing, if they're feeling connected, they can start to brainstorm how to uh, continue with the class next year. Um, next slide, please. So I really wanna thank everybody. Um, I uh, really appreciate my mentor, um, Karen, who uh, in addition to just thank you for your time, obviously, I also really appreciate that um, you've been really un, you know, willing to ask the hard questions and to challenge me. Um, so I really appreciate that. Thank you, Karen. And um, Maria, as a fellow program runner, when I also am in the process of running programs, I know that there's like so much behind the scenes work that very few people appreciate. So you, the way you ran this has been really seamless and I'm really impressed. Thank you. Um, and then also RMMFI, I think everyone said this already, but in addition to sort of the hard curriculum of like learning about, you know, content, various like businessy things, I think that just being part of this program has really encouraged all of us to feel that sense of community and humans work well in community and that sense of interconnectedness that inspires us to stay focused on our goals. So I really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you. Adrian! Oh, yes, that was amazing! <laughs> that was a beautiful presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved all the images. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. I think you'll have a lot of people signing up as well. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's move on to Jess with Little by Little. Um, um, amazing presentations, guys. Like, I'm so impressed by everyone. It's been awesome to watch. Um, and thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Jessica Little. I'm the founder and CEO of Little by Little, and I offer heart-centered organizing services. Um, next slide, please. And if you're wondering what heart-centered organizing looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and read right off of this slide because I put a lot of time and effort into these words. So this describes my business to a T. Um, we connect your home with your heart. Together, we learn to go inward first in order to address outward stress and cl clutter. We mindfully and intentionally Im eliminate what no longer serves you um, and create a space that brings peace of mind and joy. We acknowledge the energetic connection to everything in our home, in your home, and we discover what might be holding you back, creating chaos, or simply what you have outgrown. Um, and that is my business to achieve. Um, next slide, please. So for my capstone focus, I narrowed it down to two key factors, existing client delight and client acquisition. Um, by focusing, or focusing on these two elements ensures a comprehensive client experience that is pleasant and professional, which in turn leads to steady stream of new clients to serve and delight. And therefore everything that is done within little by little is focused on meeting these two areas, these two focuses. Uh, next slide, please. So existing client delight, um, everyone here understands why this is important for every business, but for little by little, it is crucial. 
Um, a lot of trust must be gained in a very short amount of time. Therefore, credibility is everything. Clear expectation, expectations, open and honest communication, thorough follow-up, and thrilled clients are the standard. Next slide, please. How is this standard measured? Um, by accomplishing 100% five-star ratings and reviews, clients will either refer a friend or return for more services in the future. Ideally, both. Um, there is no better advocate for your business than a happy client. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. There. Um, so client acquisition um, for little by little, building relationships with other businesses that also serve clients in their homes, such as cleaning services, real estate agents, contractors, landscapers, et cetera, is a key marketing tool along with direct um, business to client marketing. Um, other fo focuses include networking events, in-person and door-to-door -door marketing, target and targeted online ads. Um, and I also am working on updating my website. Um, next slide, please. So to measure this, um, a detailed monthly tracking system of both leads and conversion rates, as well as tracking and measuring the success of the referral program, shows us what works and what doesn't in order to meet monthly sales goals um, of one new whole house client. Um, someone that is looking to redo their entire home, reorganize their entire home, um, three clients that may have one or two projects that they're looking to work on, and then one returning client that um, can enroll in my refresh program. Next slide. Um, so this quote to the left has become a mantra for little by little. Um, we do not rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. The Thrive Business Accelerator Program has offered the following systems to rise to. With visioning and goal setting, as well as financial forecasting and projections, I get to look at the future of my business and what is possible. Um, the sales funnel that I've um, been working on looks at the current growth and where I'm at with my business. Accounting and bookkeeping helps me look at where I've, what I've done so far in my business. And then the mentorship program um, is just invaluable. It's helped me um, add clarity and focus on what's important for little by little. Um, next slide, please. So like any business, we're looking for new clients. Reach out if you're ready to explore our services or if you know someone that does. And here is all my contact information. Thank you so much. Yes. Amazing. Wonderful, wonderful job, Jess. That was great. Thank you. Awesome. And Pamela, are you ready to take us home? Pamela with little with Miss T Body Southern Tea Cake. Okay. I have to turn off my fan so I wouldn't be in the way. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for waiting. I know you got to put kids to bed and have nightcaps and all of those things. So Thank you so much for waiting. Um, I'm Pamela Richard. My business is called Miss Peabody Southern Tea Cakes. I specialize in tea cakes, but I also do other Southern inspired desserts. Hey, Jessica. Um, next. Um, I've had some life changes since, since I started the program. I lost my father in December and that's my dad. I was at Tea Leaves and he was helping me deliver my product and then I had to put my dog down in the middle of it. So, um, but in spite of that, you know, um, I miss them both very much. So next slide. Started my business in 2019 um, and I got started because I was let go from a job and I didn't like that. So I thought I'm gonna start my own business and I'm gonna have control over my own life. And I came back to Army MFI and there was someone, Paul, who's no longer there, but Paul turned me on to this program at um, Emily Griffith. And with this program, you did a six week class, six weeks, and then you were able to pitch your idea. And I did the class and I pitched my idea. And that's how I got the funding to get my license and all of those things back in 2019. I started my business as a way to achieve economic, financial, and mental freedom. I've never been a cubicle land kind of person. I've never really liked that. And since I've been an entrepreneur, I, I really like being an entrepreneur. I mean, I work harder, 
but you know, I was in the kitchen this morning at six, but I'm done for the rest of the day. Um, and I also want to leave a family legacy as well as a, a community legacy. I want people that look like me to know that this is definitely possible to have your own business. So next slide. Um, show me the money. Oops, I can't because my finances are like that forest. I could not see the forest for the trees um, because my finances, so I started my capstone focus was to get my finances together. And because they were not together, I was unable to apply for PPI money. I really don't know where my business is. Um, it's it has prohibited my business growth and my business goals. It stresses me out and it prevents me from being able to compete. So my goal was to get my finances together. Um, my business, as far as I know, I mean, I'm able to pay for everything out of my own business account, but I really don't know where I am. So I'm, I'm working on getting that together. Next slide. Um, I want to get out of the forest. So that is the path. That is my tea cakes. That's the path to getting out of the forest. I was able to recently retrieve my financial data from zero. It was owned by another company and they finally was able to get my information back from that company. So I now have my own zero account. Um, with my mentor and a bookkeeper, my goal is to have my finances together by the 4th of July. I have an amazing mentor. I know we all have really, really good mentors, but mine is even more amazing. But, you know, so anyway, um, and what the Thrive Program has done for me, besides giving me an amazing mentor, it has introduced me to automation, um, things that I'm willing to let go of now. I, I haven't always been with, like most of us, you know, our, our businesses are like our babies. And I always said I've been homeschooling my baby for a while and now I want my baby to go to school. I'm ready for my baby to go to school now because I want to grow. I, I don't want to work as hard as I want to work smarter, not harder. And so by having automation, by learning new skills, hopefully they're gonna help me. And it also helped me to just recommit to my business. Like, um, cause I was getting burnt out. I was being stressed out. I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know what to do. And so I'm definitely more recommitted to my business. Next slide. Um, what I've learned from the Thrive Accelerator Program is about CRMs. I needed administrative assistance, so I hired my niece to work five hours, five hours a week, because all I could afford to pay her five hours a week to just check my emails, send me what's going on, keep my website updated. I'm also going to start doing email collection on my website. I didn't know that you can't use someone's email, even if you have it. You have to get permission. I learned that. Um, updating my website, like doing the email collection. I also want to get an email address that is to the website, not a Gmail. I want to get rid of the Gmail. I want everything to come through the website. Also, um, just getting a bookkeeper. I have contacted someone, but I think between my mentor and my bookkeeper, I should be able to um, get my books and everything together by the 1st of July. It helps to have a mentor. Someone that can run, you can bounce ideas off, and then someone that's different from me. My mentor is more of a numbers person, and I'm a lover. I'm a touchy feely kind of person, so it really helped to keep me more focused on what I need to do. Email collection twice. See, I'm a lover. Um, then also just goal setting. There we had a guy. I can't think of his name, and I apologize, but he says, "What are you going to be doing in August?" I'm sorry, April of 2023, and I'm looking forward to April of 2023 because my goal is to increase my wholesale accounts by 30% or more, which will enable me to hire my, pay for myself and hire, and hire some of these positions that I have. But I really, I'm looking forward to um, April of 2023. I wanna see where I am April of 2023. And the pictures, um, you can order my, my products online, but people also know me and they'll call me. And so this was a representative um, in Denver and they had ordered my, my tea cakes for a meeting back in February. Next slide, please. Um, this picture of this gentleman here, he was my very first customer in 2019. He's a plumber. He came to fix some work for me and he ordered tea cakes for me that day. And he just called me about two weeks ago and ordered again. So it's really cool that, you know, my very first customer is still a customer. So these are some of the intangible lessons that I learned things that I've learned or gained from the um, TBI, TBA program. I got my mojo back. Um, I feel 
like I have a viable business that I really can take to the next level because my long-term goal is to have my products on Frontier and United. And I know that's doable because there's a black woman that did it in um, Aurora, Illinois about three months ago and her products are on American Airlines. So that representation just made me like, make my heart soar. Um, it's my business. Something that Jesse said that I keep in my mind when I make a decision now, when I think about making a decision now, when I get confused, when I'm not sure, I, I ask myself or I say, tell myself, it's your business. So you can do it how you want to do it. It's your business. You don't have to do that. It's your business. You don't have to get up. So that really was really helpful. I'm um, just resetting my mindset, just really re looking at it. Like I said, like I know I've been really fortunate. I've been branded pretty good. People know my business. Um, people, if they don't know my business, they they don't know me, they know Miss Peabody. They don't know that I'm the same person. But yeah, so um, I've got more confidence because I know that it's viable. I'm setting goals. And more importantly, I'm giving myself grace. I, I wasn't giving myself grace. Every mistake I made, was like a mountain, everything I didn't do right, I felt bad about everything I didn't get done, I felt bad about. Now I am giving myself grace because all of us, all 11 of us are doing what most people talk about. They talk about having businesses, they talk about what they're gonna do. And ours may not be perfect, but we're, we are entrepreneurs and we are business owners and we all need to give ourselves grace. So I'm giving myself grace. Um, next slide. Thanks, Pamela. I have probably about 30 more seconds. Okay, well, I got some more slides. Okay. <laughs> this is my slide. This is where you this is my information where you can find me at. Um, you can find my products at Tea Lee's Tea House. You can find my products at Mia Wolf, and you can find my products online. And look what I found. I found my certificate for Army MFI 2011. So I've been around a long time. Um, but yeah, I, it, this has been a really good program just to get my just to get me back together. I feel like I'm back together. And I told my mentor, she can't break up with me. We're not done yet. We're still in our relationship. She can't quit me. So because there's things that I want to do and I just I like her spirit. So, yeah, um, I miss people. I serving tea cakes. Like I said, my claim to fame is tea cakes, but I also make pies and other products that I will be. I make um, pies and um cinnamon rolls and pralines and so yeah that's me next slide wow amazing i'm not crying you're crying who's crying <laughs> great job amazing. pamela that was great thanks so much for bringing us home strong um that was awesome. Yeah, I just want to, can we all just unmute and give a huge round of applause for all of our entrepreneurs? Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Really good job. Good job. I hope you all are you. really proud of yourselves. That was amazing. Um, that was great. Well, I think, you know, we'll just start to kind of wrap up a little bit more. We have a, just a few more slides left, a few things, a few more things to celebrate. Um, but yeah, our capstone presentations are complete. What a joy to just learn about what you all are doing and all the amazing things that you've accomplished. Um, so congratulations to everyone. You've officially completed the Thrive Business Accelerator program. You're at the end, you did it. Everyone is gonna get a digital certificate emailed to them in about a couple of weeks. It'll look like what's on the slide here. Um, and I also wanna give a huge shout out to a few of our entrepreneurs who had perfect attendance throughout the whole TBA. And so those entrepreneurs are Rhea, Pamela, Mark, Jantir, and Rochelle. So huge round of applause for you all. I think that just, uh, you know, it says a lot about your commitment, your dedication. You already had a whole esophagus, buddy. <laughs> Sarah was talking to her dog, by the way. That was not okay. Oh, yeah. I'm so uh, sorry. My <laughs> dog is crying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was still unmuted. Very, so it really caught me off guard. But <laughs> um, yeah, huge, huge. Uh, I think just celebrating these folks for perfect attendance. I know y'all are super busy and you still made it to class every single time. And I really appreciate that. Um, and just want to say a huge thank you to the whole RMMFI team for all the support, helping to make this Thrive program possible. Specifically, I really want to thank 
Jeremy, Pat, Emma, and Emily for just all the amazing check-ins. And, you know, I'm also newer and helping me get up to speed on things. So huge thank you to you all. And just a couple of highlights here. So since 2008, our MMFI has helped launch and go grow 334 businesses, which is incredible, and has made 313 loans totaling almost a million dollars, which is also amazing. Um, and, and Maria, can I just, uh, I'm gonna cut in for one sec. Cause I, I wanna give you a shout out, Maria. You know, um, there, was a, there was a number of themes that I heard all throughout the night. I heard about uh, passion and community and resiliency, but I also heard every single presenter tonight shout you out and just the amazing work that you did. So thank you uh, from, from all of us uh, at RMFI. You, you started and four weeks later, you launched uh, this cohort and you did an incredible job. So thank you. Awesome, yes. Does anyone want to unmute to, to give Maria a round of applause? Oh, <laughs> Thank you all. Really appreciate that. It's been such a joy to be on this journey with you all too. So I'm really grateful. Awesome. Um, and I think Pat, uh, this is your, this is you. So I'll pass it over to you. Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, evening, and uh, again, a big uh, congratulations to to those who completed and uh, just taking on a new uh, direction or you know continual growth in their their business. So congratulations, excuse me. Um, as you guys know, Thrive is kind of a robust program. We have a lot going on, but a lot of things to continue for um, your success and to uh, uh, just be engaged with. Uh, let's see. Coming up here first, we have, as you guys know, the Bamboo Club. Um, I'm not sure if you guys had to take a, a moment to uh, become a member on the Bamboo Club. Uh, it's a platform on Facebook uh, that we use or Facebook we use uh, to kind of stay up to date with uh, resources ongoing events, um, encouragement, or just kind of, you know, how Facebook can be uh, support one another. So if you haven't had a moment to join the Facebook page or the BAM Club on Facebook, please do. Um, and not to overshadow, you guys have a great uh, event planned for Thursday, or not Thursday, Friday, but we have another, um, regarding the BAM Club um, group, we have a social event on June 17th, which uh, will be at Unwelton at Agave Shore, um, so we hope everyone can come out and uh, just come in celebratory mode and uh, just get to know one another again. Uh, let's see, that's for Thrive. And as you guys know, we can continue to, um, there's mentor opportunities, accountability coaches, you guys, I'm sure all may have, or, uh, want at some point may want to do. Uh, there's also those opportunities that if you feel you need to uh, get a better handle or understanding of someone, um, we have opportunity or we have coaches and mentors that will assist on your continual growth. Um, let's see, so you guys know about that. And then one thing that's also important, I gotta say this, is um, in six months, we'll be doing, um, as, as you guys kind of not like piloted, but as we continue to refine uh, what's helpful and um, where we're at in this, the business development uh, for our grads, uh, you'll get some surveys. So please take the moment to just answer the surveys as you see them coming down. Uh, three, six months, and almost, I think, out, all the way out to a year or two years. Um, we'd appreciate that. So as we can continue to uh, grow the program, let's see. Uh, Oops. And uh, we'll have some access to future markets coming up. Um, the Juneteenth uh, Festival that will take place uh, that June 15th through, I'm sorry, I'm rough with dates, that week in particular. Um, you'll see some information also with that flyer regarding the Bamboo Club social event. So um, I think that's it. And again, congratulations for you, 11. Um, and everyone else on the call, we appreciate the support. Um, it, it's just being a part of the community is such a kinetic and uh, good vibe, harmonic vibe that we all set when we kind of get together. So I'm appreciative to be a part of it. Amazing. Thank you so much, Pat. That was great. Yeah, and just a few last final announcements before we close. So as Pat mentioned, we have an in-person get together this Friday. Um, that's for entrepreneurs and mentors and um, our MMFI staff. And that'll just be a really great time to actually meet each other in person for the first time. So really looking forward to that. It's gonna be at Brews off Colfax from one to 4 p.m. Let me know if you don't have the Google Calendar invite or if you need more information. 
Um, we'll host a TBA quarterly reunion and goal setting event. Um, that's going to be August 25th from 5.30 to 6.30. And so these reunions are really just a great opportunity for entrepreneurs to reconnect as a community, set goals together. You can check in on these goals, offer resources, just continue to grow together and just, you know, have that strong community. Um, so definitely look forward to that. More information will be coming. Really encourage you to attend that and just check in with your fellow cohort members later in August. Um, entrepreneur and mentor feedback surveys will be mailed to you later this week. They're short, they're sweet, but they also really help us improve our programming. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Thrive, the, the Thrive Business Accelerator is relatively new. So really, really appreciate your feedback. That'll just help us make it even better for the next cohort. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Yeah, that was, that was really wonderful. Um, before we close, I do, let me stop sharing my screen. I do want to take a screenshot of all of us. Give me one second. Okay. I don't know if you all remember if you were here, but we did this at the very beginning. Um, during orientation, we took a screenshot and now we're going to do it again as a way to kind of close out this chapter. So let me remember how to do this on a Mac because I'm not a Mac person. Um, okay. One, two, three, smile. I messed it up. Okay, wait. <laughs> I, wrote a note to my, I even wrote a note to myself. Okay, shift control three. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay. It's not working for me. Can someone else do it? I can do it. Yeah, I got you. I got okay. you. Um, all right. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm going to move to my bigger monitor so I can get as many faces in, in the shot at once. Thanks, Emily. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Emma covered me with the live stream that I really was super prepared for. So got to cover each other. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm going to take a few. So I'll just say like three, two, one, and I'll take a couple. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, another one. Three, two, one. Um, all right, sorry, one more. Saw it like frozen people's faces, I think like right before. I think my countdown wasn't great. All right, take that again. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm loving, honestly, looking at some of these poses. They're incredible. Um, last one. Three, two, one. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Y'all are amazing. Awesome, everyone. Great job, everybody. Great job. Thank you so much, everyone. Great job, entrepreneurs. That's awesome. Everyone. Have a great evening and hopefully see you all on Friday. It was wonderful.